Good day, Grade 12. Welcome on your, to your second lesson on geometric optics. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the refraction of light. So the first thing we need to stress is that the speed of light is a constant in a specific medium. So the speed of light is constant in air, it's constant in water, if it's traveling through glass, it's constant in glass, okay? But the maximum it can be is 3 times by 10 to the 8 meters per second in a vacuum. Now if you look at your formula sheets, you will see that we use the constant of speed of light as 3 times by 10 to the 8 meters per second, and that we talk about is when the speed of light, the light is traveling through air and the reason being is that even though we're not in a vacuum it is very very close to being in a vacuum so it doesn't slow down the speed of light that much okay so that's why we can use it to give us an approximate value of when we need to work things out like when in grade 12 you talk about the Doppler effect but we'll talk about that later right so let's watch this little video we're gonna have some interruptions because I want to teach you in between but let's start off now Refraction of light. You would have probably noticed that a spoon placed in a glass of water looks bent at the surface of water when viewed obliquely. The print on a page appears to be raised when the book is held behind a glass bottle filled with water. All these are the tricks of light. We shall explore how a light ray travels from one optical medium into another. You will need a glass of water, milk, pencil, a torch, aluminium foil, elastic band, needle. First you need to prepare a point source of light. Observe how the torch is adapted as a point source of light. Here you've the point source of light. To give a cloudy effect for the glass of water, add a little milk to water. Darken the room. Shine the ray of light from the torch to the bottom of the glass. Observe the path of the ray of light. The path is crooked. This shows that a ray of light changes its direction of propagation as it travels from air to water. Similarly, a pencil which is partially dipped in water appears bent or broken to the observer. When a ray of light passes from air to water, its speed changes. Due to this, there is a change in direction of the ray. This change of direction suffered by a ray of light as it passes obliquely from one optical medium to another optical medium with different optical densities is known as refraction. Right, grade 12, so, I mean grade 11, so what I want to explain to you quickly is what they mean by optical density. So optical density is a measure of the refracting power of a medium, okay? In other words, the higher the optical density, the more the light's going to be slowed down and therefore more refracted, okay? So basically, your higher your optical density, the slower the light's going to go through that medium and the more it's going to be refracted. So the higher the optical density, the higher the refractive index. Let's carry on with the video. Note that whenever a ray of light is incident on a surface separating two media, a small fraction of the light always gets reflected. Refraction can make an object appear to be in a different position. For the same reason, the part of the pencil which is submerged looks as if it has moved away from the part above water and it appears fatter. So let's just go through what we've learned so far. When a ray of light passes from air to water, its speed changes. Why? Because of the different optical densities. And this will cause a change in the direction of the ray. 
This change is caused by the different optical densities. Whenever a ray of light is incident on a surface, we have a small fraction of light that is reflected. We generally can't see it, but there is a tiny bit that is reflected. And refraction can make an object appear to be in a different position, see? And you guys can try this at home. Just put a pencil in a glass of water and you'll see. Pencil supposed to look straight, but if you look at it from the side, it'll look like it's bending and it'll actually look fatter as well. Right, let's carry on. Now, let's understand the phenomenon of refraction by studying the ray diagrams. Whenever a ray of light is traveling from a rarer medium to a denser medium, the refracted ray bends towards the normal. Here, IO is the incident ray, OR is the refracted ray, I is the angle of incidence, and R is the angle of refraction. In this case, Angle I greater than angle R. If the ray of light is traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium, the refracted ray bends away from the normal. Here, IO is the incident ray, OR is the refracted ray, I is the angle of incidence, and R is the angle of refraction. In this case, angle I less than angle R. For definitions, click on the labels. Right, so let's look at these definitions, shall we? Right, the incident ray. The incident ray is the ray of light that is striking the surface of separation. In other words, it is striking the surface between the two different optical media. Okay, so that's the incident ray. Easy peasy. The normal is basically an imaginary line that is drawn perpendicular to the surface of the separation. So, in this case, this piece of glass is rectangular, which is why we can just draw the normal straight through. But remember that the normal is always perpendicular to whichever surface the ray is hitting. Okay, so it's always perpendicular. And perpendicular means that it's at 90 degrees. The angle of incidence is the angle that is made between the incident ray and the normal. That's all it is. Nice and easy. The angle of refraction is the angle between the normal. Okay, remember that this is a very much a pretend line. Okay, right? It is what we draw in. Okay, it's an imagined line and between the angle of, I mean between the refracted lay, ray. So the angle of refraction is between the normal and the refracted ray. And finally the refracted ray is the ray of light that has changed its direction okay, due to the difference in the optical densities as it travels, light travels from the one medium to the other. The ability to refract light is called the refractive index. Refractive index of a medium is equal to the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum or air to the speed of light in that particular medium. Refractive index is equal to speed of light in vacuum by speed of light in the medium. This ratio is always a constant for a given pair of media. It is represented by a Greek letter mu. Here are some of the effects of refraction. A straight pencil, PQ, when immersed obliquely in water, a portion of it appears to be shortened and raised up as P1, Q1, under the water. Let us understand this with the help of a ray diagram. Rays of light from the point Q are traveling from water to air. As the rays of light are traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium, they bend away from the normal. After refraction at the surface, they appear to be coming from point Q1, which is true for each and every point of the part of the pencil which is immersed in the water. During spear fishing, the fisherman aims at the tail of the fish. When a fish in clear water is viewed from an angle, its image appears ahead of its actual position, as it is raised up due to refraction of light from water to air. Okay, let's just go a bit more in depth with this. Remember that light comes down from the sun, okay, it hits the fish, and then it gets reflected in all different angles. But let's pretend that you are looking at the fish from over here, 
Okay, so this night ray, which is coming from this point of the fish, goes up, 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 up. Then, because this is more dense, the water is more dense in the air, it bends away from the normal and it carries on in a straight line. But now, if you were looking along that ray, our eyes believe that light travels in a straight line, right? So where are you going to see that light ray? You're going to see that light ray go down this way, okay? Similarly, this year, the light comes down from the sun, hits the fish over there, goes up, 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 hits the boundary line, bends away from the normal, and then again, if we were looking along that, we would see the fish over here. So we think the fish is over here, okay, which is at its apparent depth. It's where it's apparently where we apparently think it is, compared to its real depth. So what does that mean? That means that we're going to think that the fish is way shallower than where it actually is. Thus, if the fisherman aims at the head of the image of the fish, the spear will hit in front of the actual fish. However, if the aim is at the tail of the image, it is likely to hit on the head of actual fish. Go through the ray diagram to understand this. Okay, so let's do that. Here's the light coming from the tail of the fish and goes up, 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 bends away from the normal, okay, because this is more optically dense than this. And here is where the spear fisherman is standing on his raft or whatever. So he is going to think the fish's tail is over here. His eyes tell him that the fish's tail is over here. So if he aims at the fish's tail where he is, and if his aim is true, his spear is going to hit the fish over here. Okay, so assuming the fish doesn't move, okay, if he aims at the tail of the fish, he will actually hit, hit, hit towards the middle of the fish. Okay, right, so that is how that works. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. That's what we were taught. But do they really twinkle? No, stars do not twinkle. Let us now learn about why they appear to do so. The rays of light coming from the stars travel through the layers of air of varying densities. These rays get refracted continuously and they bend towards the normal as the refraction is from a rarer to a denser medium. The movements of air and convection currents causes a change in the density of the layers of air. As a result, the position of the image of the star goes on changing after every short interval. These different positions of the images formed at short intervals of time give the impression that the star is twinkling. At dusk or dawn, the sun appears to be larger than at noon. This is because when the sun is near the horizon, the rays of light coming from the sun have to pass through layers of air of increasing density. Due to continuous bending of light, the sun appears to be larger. At noon, the sun appears to be smaller than at dusk or dawn. This is because the rays of light that fall normally on the surface of the earth do not get refracted. Right, grade 11, so before I talk about anything else, please do me a favor, do not go look directly into the sun. Not even with sunglasses on, they're not strong enough. You will damage your eyesight, so please do not do that. Trust us on this or go get some special glass, go ask your teacher or your mentor about some special glass you can use. It's usually from the helmets that people use to weld with. You can look at the sun through that, but not otherwise. Right, grade 11, so what do you need to know from this? video. You need to know that speed is a con the speed of light is a constant. Maximum is 3 times by 10 to the 8. You need to know that refraction is the bending of light as light travels through um, from one optical from one medium of certain optical densi density to another. And you need to know that the, you need to know the refractive index and also you need to be able to draw those ray diagrams. But we will do a little bit more practice on that as well as we go on with the geometric optics. Have a great day.